everyone. Welcome to The Pitch with Fox, Beanoms, and Mitch. I'm your host, John Fox, alongside here with Beanoms and Mitch Sabatelli. Top stories of the week, Michael Vick dominates in the blowout against Washington. I think uh, that's an understatement. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, do, what do you guys think about his performance? Yeah, Vick yeah, yeah. was just absolutely sick. You know, yeah. for, 333 in the air. Uh, he was like a running back, too. 80, 80, 80, 80 on the ground, two touchdowns running, four in the, in the air. The Four in the air, 333 in, um, yards, and um, most of that was done out in the first two quarters. I think he had like five touches in the first half, and yeah. that's in the rain, too. And, uh, you know, with McNabb's new contract, which we were talking about in a little week, that was overshadowed. And Michael Vick's looking like the MVP in the league. And what he's done with all the off all, all the off field problems and now um, turning it into on the field, he's really looking like an MVP candidate. He's looking like the old Vick, maybe even a he little is. better. Maybe better. I mean, I, I think this is probably the best performance a quarterback has ever put on in the NFL. I think it is. Um, I, I don't really Tom know Brady how had some, that. Yeah, Tom Brady had some solid years in 07 with uh, Moss Yeah, but, I mean, the two rushing touchdowns with the yeah. 80 yards and, and all doing that in the first half. Just, uh, just how dynamic this player is. I've really never seen a, a guy with that. You know, I've only been watching football for the last like, 10 years or so, but since I started watching, I've never seen a guy at any position – so dynamic, how he can run, how he can pass, and really, I think his accuracy has gotten better. Yeah. And Deshaun Jackson plays right into his game mm -hmm. with um, Macklin. They're both very fast. I don't think he, in Atlanta he had those kind of receivers. I think Vic's one of the fastest players in the league, too. Yeah, he's, he's very fast. So, I mean, how do you stop him? And you can't sack him because you can't get enough pressure on no, him. How, how, how do you stop him? I mean, it's ridiculous. If, if you try to run after him, he's just going to dump it off to someone. And if, if you let him go, he's going to destroy you. Run for 30 yards. Yeah, so. Exactly. All right, next top story. Uh, Donovan McNabb signed a five-year, $78 million contract extension with the Redskins. Do you think that was overlooked? I mean, uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? I, I, I personally think that he's worth the money. Um, he, he, I mean, he was dominant in Philly, and just because they had Vic and Cobb, you know, they didn't need him. But he's still a great player. He just needs the players around him. I think he's probably the most underrated quarterback in the last... 10 years or so. Underrated? I, I disagree. I don't think he's the most underrated. But, I mean, all you hear about is, is how bad Don McNabb did. You never hear any of the good stuff he did. Yeah, true. But that's because he plays in Philly. I want to talk about this contract a little bit. It's not exactly what you see. It. I want, as soon as you see the contract, you're like, what the hell just happened? What, what was Washington thinking? But it especially, has the option. Yeah, it, hold on. Especially after the Albert Hainsworth contract, everybody just kind of uh, finally putting that aside. That was one of the dumbest contracts in the NFL. And they, they offer him this contract. That was stupid. But um, I guess after the 2011 season, um, he can. He, um, they have an option, and if they do the option, that's how. The, uh, that's when the contract actually takes off. So he can. They have a bonus for him to get him um, in 2011. If he, they don't want to have the bonus, then the contract's off, and he becomes a free agent. Also, I guess there might, there's a rumor about having to be a lockout. This gives um, Washington and Donovan McNabb flexibility for these first two years. In case there is a lockout, that he can sign with any other team once the lockout's over. So just it's flexible. It's flexible for both Washington and Donovan McNabb. But if I saw this contract and it was just legit, then I would say no, that was a terrible move, especially because he had all those problems in Philly, injury concerns. Yeah, that, that that's the only problem with him. But I mean, he he is a great quarterback. The, um, there's a lot of like different incentives. I guess he, if he if he finishes out his contract. And wins every Super Bowl for the next five years or whatever, then he'll have eighty-eight million. So it's a, a big range. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So it's a big range. It's not. It's not exactly what you see. So um, I mean, he's a definitely a franchise guy, but I think he's too old right now for that kind of contract. Yeah, I think maybe they should have done like an option every year. Yeah. Type of a thing instead of. But I think that's the only way Donovan was going to accept. Yeah. And with the new lockout thing. If they if he if they do accept the contract, accept the um, bonus, then he just gets he just makes bank for the rest of the his contract. But these first two years give both sides flexibility. And this this is probably the last contract he'll sign. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless he becomes a free agent and goes with another team. Yeah, yeah. I I don't see that happening. I think they'll keep him. All right, all right. Moving on. Greg Oden will miss the season. Um, you know that that's a big shocker. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a shocker. When I heard that, I was like, oh my god, I never expected this. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, I, you know, I, um, I, I really thought he was going to come back, you know, like he said to everybody, and, you know, instead you get slapped with a knee surgery yeah, that no, ends this, the season. This so. really affects his career. He had a Hall of Fame career going, and now he's um, out for season. I didn't think that I was going to see this one coming. But really, this guy's been my, one of the... My fantasy big, team is in trouble. The, now. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> no, this guy was like one of the big... Probably the biggest bosses yeah. ever in NBA. I, um, I wouldn't say that, though, because, I mean... 
Next, he doesn't play. Next year, he's he only going to be 23. Play. Yeah, that's true. But he's only going to be 23. But he's he's going to be injured again. But if, if yeah. he doesn't get injured, he still has a long time where he can become a great player. I tell you, any chance when people are talking about, oh, should we take Greg Oden or Kevin Durant? Um, I wish uh, Portland had that decision back right now. Kevin Durant would I think the they wish player. that, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Greg Oden, I mean, I think he still has a chance. But, I mean, he really needs to stay on the court and just do better. I mean, his knees are really a problem. Um, he's he, ever since he was in Ohio State in college, he's had a problem with his knee, and that's really what his only drawback was in um, coming into the NBA. Really, it's affecting him still. And um, so, Greg Oden still has a chance, but I mean, really, I think he's just gonna bust. I, I I'm not ready to call him a bust yet, but I mean, when he does play those couple of preseason games, you know, he's shown flashes. He's, he, yeah, I mean, he's solid, but he's not a number one pick. Yeah, no, he's, he's been, he, even he, when they drafted him, I I was like, that's yeah, the dumbest decision, yeah, even, decision you can make. Well, not not at the time. Um, as a Celtics fan, when I wanted one of those top two picks, I would have been ecstatic to have Greg Oden. He's a great guy in college. I, I would have rather Durant though. Oh, me too, too. But I mean, um, I think the Celtics benefited. It, it, it seems like picking a big man early usually It's always fires. a problem, yeah. You look at Darko Milicic in front of uh, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. I can't remember his name, but Portland, like, a few years back, had also drafted a, a big man, and he turned out the same way. So. Is it Marcus Aldridge? No. I, I, I can't remember his name, but he, I don't know he, he played, like, three games and then got hurt. Yeah. In his it, it's, big men always have more problems, that are bigger risk because they're bigger. Yeah, then I uh, uh, look out. Yeah, exactly. Still hurt. Is he, is he ever gonna play? I don't know. All right. Well, uh, moving on, we have some we have some fan questions. Uh, we got a question from Bob of New York who asked, uh, out of these players, which do you guys hate the most? Michael Vick, Tiger Woods, Brett Favre, or LeBron James? Wow, that's a good question. Well, I've never hated Vick. I mean. Before this whole dog thing, he was my favorite player in the NFL, and I never really lost that love for him. I I, I didn't like what he did. Yeah. But to go as far as hating him, no. Um, Tiger Woods, who really cares? I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, just how, how many guys do that? You know? Yeah. Um, LeBron James, I I completely hate. Who's the last one? <laughs> Brett, uh, Brett, Brett Favre. Favre. Brett Favre. No, I, I, I'm at the point where I don't even want to hear his name anymore. Yeah, Brett, I, I, exactly. I don't hate him, but just who Brett Favre's a total d bag. I mean, this guy's just a, everybody hates him. Um, LeBron but, James. But that that pretty much leaves LeBron James. And, no, but listen, listen. I'm a huge. I don't know if you guys know this. I'm a huge LeBron James fan. I know that. I have been, but um, as soon as I became an NBA fan, I've been watching the NBA a little bit before he came in. But I was really pumped for him to come into the league. He was great in high school, and he's um, he's really shown everybody that he can actually produce in the NBA. A lot of people were doubting him for that, and I think a lot of people say. I mean, I definitely lost tons of respects for the whole decision and the take my talent. See, I'm the complete thing. opposite. I I didn't think that was all that bad. I mean, yeah, you know, he was being a little oh, cocky no. or whatever, but you know, I mean, it, it's not that bad. Yeah, what he did to Cleveland that was that was sad for Cleveland fans. But what did he do to Cleveland? He, he didn't helped, do anything. He put Cleveland on the map. Yeah, Cleveland I mean, was nothing without him. I mean, I, I didn't even know Cleveland had a team until he was there. You know, LeBron James, uh, he takes a lot of criticism, but really it's just because he's really good. I mean, But see, that that's where I hate him, because I think he's really overrated. He might I be mean, overrated. You, you can't rely on him in a clutch situation to do but anything. And When people see him in an interview and they always say how he's cocky or whatever, um, I really don't see that. I mean, the guy's really a young guy. He really didn't have any college experience to go through anything. He coming through well, high school, fault is that? he's pretty mature himself, but still. I mean, he's, he's mature for his age, but whatever. We'll move on to the other players here. I hate Brett Favre. He's one of my least favorite players. I mean, I hate A-Rod, too, but obviously we can't put him on the list. But um, Brett Favre, I hate Brett Favre. What he did for, to Green Bay, he should have just retired. Everybody knows the story. He should have retired after the Jets, and then he should have retired again. He just stayed retired. And then now this whole Jen Sturger thing, that's a problem. I put him in the last. I think what Vic has done for, um, with all the off-the-field off problems he always admits, yeah, he went to jail. He always admits he had a bad pass instead of other people just kind of brushing it off. But, I mean, he, he's also owned up to it. And, yes, exactly. And, I mean, you know, he, he grew up in a, in a bad area. I mean, yeah, you can't blame everything on that, but that does affect you. Yeah. So you can't blame him totally. Exactly. And at the same time, it, he wasn't really the head of that whole dogfight. I thing. think he was. No, actually. he just funded it. It was actually one of his well, Either way, it's yeah. horrible. No, I know. It's, it's <laughs> horrible, but it's not like he was out there actually doing it. Yeah, he was no, just giving the money It's for not it. a very good thing, but... Um, I mean, he, he was looking at it as a business investment. Yeah, but I think... It's a really bad one. He's definitely owned up to it. I think uh, people are... What he's brushed that off, 
He's owned up to it, put everything on the field, now he looks like an MVP candidate. I think people are brush, um, the, final the thing I like about him is he keeps his mouth shut. He does. The, the, the thing that I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't personally hate any of these players. I just hate what they've done. I mean, you look at Michael Vick. I mean, you look, uh, that was horrible. I mean, you look at Tiger Woods. He's a pretty terrible person right now. And uh, uh, LeBron James, he's my, he's. I don't, I don't even know. There's no reason for anybody to hate him. I just he's good. I want to be. He's, uh, he, besides him making a uh, "Who do you want me to be?" commercial. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he, he, he's all right, but Brett Favre has become a nag to the league, yeah, to the media. A, he's he's a, a, nobody a cares. Nobody really cares. Everybody hates. I him. think that's the reason I don't hate him. him. I think that's the reason I don't hate him. It's just I'm so sick of him that I kind of block him out. Whenever they whenever they win a game, it's always yeah I had a good game today. Whenever they lose the game, they always say yeah we suck today. He never puts it all on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. I just want to put one more point here. I think a lot of it is, has to do with who you grew up with. I grew up with Michael Vick and LeBron James. And that's why I don't hate them as much. I didn't. Uh, Brett Favre, most of his career was before I started watching the game. So you know, ever, ever, ever since I started watching, he's always done bad things. So I think that's the problem. I think if you grew up a little bit earlier, I think now you'd hate Michael Vick a little bit more. I don't but know. at the same time, too, like I don't, I don't know. I mean, th there's just something about LeBron James that I hate. Yeah. I, I don't, I can't even figure out what it is. I just don't like him. Well, yeah, he's just, he's just a cocky player, but. I mean, he's the, really a good I, I would probably have to say, I'd probably have to say Tiger Woods would be second on my list really? after LeBron. I mean, like like I said, Brett Favre, who cares about... See, Tiger Woods, that was huge for what happened to him, but I think that's a little too far off, and since then he's kind of, he's kind of sucked since he started. I think people are kind of just letting that go, but... But I mean... For me, it's Brett Favre. Yeah. Did, did you hear what Brett Favre said? That he's not even thinking about another season now? Oh, really? But... Yeah, we'll see what happens. How many happens. times yeah. he said that? Yeah. It's, it's he'll right. be back next he'll year. Make a gene, he'll make a few Gene commercials. He'll cry a bit to yeah. the press, and then he'll be back. So. Maybe take a few more pictures. Yeah. So. He'll, come, he'll come back next year and try to win again. All right, well. Then I'll get hurt. Then maybe I'll hate him. <laughs> having said that, who do you think the public's most hated out of them? Brett Favre. Brett Favre. I think Brett Favre is pissed off the most amount of people. This is a tough um, question, but... I think if you're not a big sports fan, it's definitely Michael Vick yeah. for what he did. You know what I'm saying? But if you are a sports fan, I think you you know what he did to get away from that. LeBron, what, what at, this, at, at the same time, Vick is the most forgiven of all of them, too. No. 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 LeBron James has not done anything. Yeah, no, 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 he's he's no, I, I'm, I'm not talking LeBron. I'm talking about the other three. Yeah. You're talking, like, he's the most forgiven of those three. You saw no, Michael Vick. Yeah. Well, yeah, right now. Right? Well, because I mean, nobody talks about what Vick did. Like, nobody really talks about that. Oh, people talked about that for a yeah. solid year. No, but now that he's come back, they're not talking about it. Well, now that yeah, people are still to, talking about trying, Tiger Woods. Well, what, what I'm saying is, if you're not a big fan of any sports, I think you take Michael Vick and what Tiger Woods did because there was so much on the news. Oh, I yeah, think yeah. you'd still hate them, but Brett Favre and LeBron James, two sports fans, what they do, that's why people don't like them out yeah. All right, well, we're going to have to take a little short break right here, but up next we have MLB, so we'll see you then, all right?